another release today because the good news keeps on coming. So I've just found out that the insane kind of curriculum for children where they pretty much portrayed an Irish family with traditional sports and food as some kind of thugs and far-right racists. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And contrasted it with a multicultural family. Um, and they're asking our children, like 12-year-olds, which family would you rather be in? So there was a lot of sunlight focused on it all around the world. And the government now has rolled over and dropped the Marxist nonsense. And they've apologized, the publisher, and they're going to remove it all from all the books they printed. <laughs> they got to do another print run. So this is happening all the time now. The stuff is getting out there. The lunacy is being called out. And I was on Redacted last night just to explain to the international audience the crazy case of Enoch Burke and here's the video now enjoy it's only a 10 minute segment and I'm with the fabulous Natalie on redacted channel and I go through everything so here you go a teacher has been arrested for refusing to use a trans student's name and chosen pronouns, saying it was against his religious beliefs. Enoch Burke was released in June, but arrested again in the last few days because he continues to show up at the school that fired him in protest. Now, he is a bit of a cultural icon in Ireland, but this story is very much not known abroad. So we've invited Irish author and commentator Ivor Cummings to discuss this. You can find him at Fat Emperor on various platforms. One of my favorite, uh, I want to say, anti-globalist voices. So thank you for joining us. Great stuff, Natalie. Delighted to be here and uh, explain what it's all about. <laughs> okay, so do that. What is the story of Ivor Cummings? Or, or Enoch Burke or I'm oh, sorry, first. Ivor Cummings is you. No, <laughs> we know your story. You've been on Redacted before. Excuse me. So what is the story of Enoch Burke? I apologize. <laughs> Very good. Absolutely. So Enoch Burke is a very religious person from a religious family. Nothing wrong with that, of course. Uh, nine children in the family, which you might say in Ireland goes with the turf of being religious, <laughs> big families. Uh, an excellent teacher, I believe, with a spotless history. But when he was being forced to use they instead of the correct uh, sex or gender for the, the child, apparently by, I, I think, uh, some leftist nutbar teacher, but supported by the system because they're all into this DEI woke nonsense, of course. Um, he refused to do so. You know, it was a principle. And then he got an argy-bargy in arguments with the staff and sent to the headmaster. And I suspect, to be quite honest, they might have let him just not address the student potentially but he would it was a point of principle so what got him in trouble was he went to a meeting and i think there were some parents there just a general meeting and he put up his hand and he raised the issue and he wanted the issue opened up so he wanted the spotlight on the issue because it was offensive to him to go against biology not to mention his christian religion and that they would have the audacity to tell him to call a child by the wrong sex. It, it, as we know, it's absurd. And uh, then because he persisted, they kind of wanted him off the school grounds and suspended. But he came back and turned up at the school. And that's when it got kind of legal. And then the courts were brought in and they were insisting he had to sign off that he would not go near the school again. I think a kind of a barring order. He refused to do so. And when he went back to the school, he ended up uh, in the clink or in the lockup. So they put him in Mount Joy, Ireland's infamous big jail. And the interesting thing was when he would not recant, if you will, think of this like the saints of old, he would not recant, he would not agree. Uh, he said, I am not fired. Legally, I don't know if they can fire him. And he said, I'm a good teacher and this is my job, I'm not fired. So he went back to the school after a few months in jail and then after more argy-bargy, he ended up back in court, refused to recant, and they put him back in jail. He spent 400 days in jail so far, since 22, in a, in a tough prison. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not fired, though. He's on suspension, and he is still collecting a paycheck. So he says, I have the right to be here, and I will be here until I get the discussion that I want. So... 
you could argue he could just go away, get a job somewhere else, and this would be over for him and there would be no more legal problems, but he refuses to do so. It's obviously start of term. He's not been assigned classes. So he's here to prove a point of social justice, right? That is exactly it. And that's what the mainstream media purposefully obfuscates and will not address. They keep making it an issue of him refusing to go along with the court, i.e. it's his fault. And theoretically, technically, that is true. He could choose to roll over, sit around and get paid potentially indefinitely, to be quite honest. I'm not sure he'd need another job. Uh, that's the way it works in Ireland. Just sweep it under the carpet so he could have an easy life. But Sweet. I think, I assume, hmm, be because he's clearly extremely smart, a highly educated family, he understands that he can... He can do that. So this is a point of principle. He, I think he is trying to draw fire, draw spotlight onto this insanity that's infecting our culture. So I think that's what he's doing. Now, 50, 60 years ago, you got a lot of people did things like that. You had a lot of principled people who are very forceful, you know, and people kind of respected that if there was an important issue at hand. But nowadays, with everyone indoctrinated and hypnotized, Everyone just says, oh, he's mad. You know, mm -hmm. it's a very interesting one. Yes, exactly. And he is still appealing his suspension because I think most people don't realize that Ireland is ground zero for gender ID. Uh, they, the government changed the laws to allow someone to change their gender without even a filing fee or any kind of requirements. You can just go and get the documents. And that was done very much under the radar. So the laws now are against him. So he will then have a tough time appealing the suspension, right? Yeah, exactly. And I often say to people, you know, a certain Adolf always changed the law uh, before he did anything. So in the end, technically, he never broke the law. It's the exact same thing for all of history with these totalitarians. So they're changing all the laws. Twice they failed in the hate speech law that we talked about before. Absolutely insane, 1984 wording. And now our prime minister says, we're going to get it through before the end of the government. So this, the woke stuff, the new books in children's school, right down to 10 years old, going through all weird sex stuff and multi-genders, and then they're even hinting at, you know, children can not tell their parents, but they can work with the teacher on some of these matters, right? Mm -hmm. All this madness is coming down from the UN, essentially. And if you go behind that, you have WEF, Rockefeller Foundation, Open Society. So this is tops down, but it is a feel that it's kind of grassroots up. Um, it's not. The fact that most people will go along with nonsense and latch onto it and go along with it doesn't mean it's grassroots. We know where it's coming from. And the UN has published extensively on children and sex stuff and teaching masturbation to like five-year-olds. I forget the exact age. So we know where it's coming from. But one quick thing, Natalie, I know it's a short item. Early on, and the media would not cover this, it came out as fact in one small newspaper, that the teacher pushing this issue on Enoch, uh, the parents discovered afterwards of the child in question, and they had no idea this issue was going on. So Enoch was dragged into this madness, asked to call a child they, and it transpired quite quickly. The parents didn't know that the kid was being manipulated in this manner. So that just that was the real story. That was a shock horror story but the media wouldn't touch it. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. That's awful because the child obviously is going through a hard enough adolescence that uh, they don't yeah. need to be at the center for something like this. Um, and in fact, Helen Joyce, and she's an Irish journalist as well, in her book Trans, talks about how trans activists purposely wanted to hide gender ID change laws or the change of these laws from the Irish people because they don't want to have a discussion about it. Now, this is something as he was arrested that Enoch Burke is saying, we need to discuss this. That's why I'm going to stay here because he wants to talk about not just pronouns and transgender uh, names, 
but also puberty blockers and things like that. Uh, so you posted on your ex account that this is very much like the brick in the wall song uh, from Roger Waters that, you know, we don't need no education. This is what's happening. Can you explain that? Yeah, essentially, someone made a clip with that with that song and I thought it was good. And it just showed him in slow motion as he was arrested. And yes, he was raising about the puberty blockers, uh, the mutilation of children at young ages. And basically, his point is our society now is being destroyed by some kind of insane influence. Now, he's 100 percent correct on that. I don't think he's aware of the extent to which all of this madness is published in the UN and elsewhere, um, but he just knows something crazy is happening and he doesn't want to see his society disintegrate. Now, he's never forced his religious views. He was very clear on that when they tried to suggest he was. He is simply conscientious. I will not be forced myself to do things against my religion and it to be honest against biology and psychology and common sense in this case and yeah the the clip is great because this is about people have to rise up start talking and push back against literally the hypnotism coming down remember that like sage in the uk during the cerveza crisis you know c19 uh, Sage in the UK, around 50 or 60 professionals that managed the whole epidemic, around half of them are psychologists. <laughs> it, it's nuts what's been going on. So, yeah, I think it's amazing to see his bravery. And I said in my tweet, this for me is a simple matter. Simply for me, he is, I think, or this scenario is, shining a light on some pretty sick mentality that's being foisted on our children on our children not on us we can handle it so i said i'm in support of this not because i agree with his religious views or i don't really have religion per se um or anything else to do with him just the fact that he's pointing a light on something that by god we need to point a light on Right. Okay. Well, thank you for breaking this down because this is a story that I've been peripherally aware of for a long time and didn't quite understand it until it came to a head again this week. So hopefully if more people understand it, they'll say, let this man have his conversation. Let him have his day in court. So uh, thank you for this. You can follow e Eva Cummings at Fat Emperor on YouTube and X and all of the platforms. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you for coming back on Redacted. Thanks so much, Natalie. Next time. That'll do it, folks. Love that channel. They're getting huge amount of real news out there against the lamestream nonsense. And as always, really appreciate the support I get from existing Patreons and PayPal supporters. Anyone else who can jump in and support a bit. I'm doing another vlog today for my Patreons. I do a couple a month. And I'm also doing a Zoom, monthly Zoom call tomorrow with certain tiers of patrons where we discuss all the issues and make sure we're strong together. So great if you can hop on there and uh, until next time.